Hello YouTube and welcome to part 5 of the fake milk character study series. So before I jump into it or State of the Union, there has been some development <laughs> with Jason. So usually when I post one of these, he raids the video with dislikes and comments. And for the first time, last video he didn't. I do think that is because he learned that it's completely useless. The reason why he tends to do that is because he tries to intimidate people into deleting the video because he threatens them with a copyright strike, with a content ID strike, etc. And for people who are not aware of YouTube's guidelines, they get afraid and they delete the video. But he also tries to create what he believes is a majority of dissenting voices by spamming comments so that the person will feel bad about making the video and they will delete it. Of course, because I was aware that he had sock accounts, it doesn't work on me. Also because in general, I don't care about what people think. So he failed on the two fronts and his new tactic is ignoring me. Sadly, it's too late because people are now aware of these videos and people in his comments are aware of the videos. So as always with uh, these introductions, I like to try and teach Jason how to live his life because he fails at it and I'm a, I'm a pretty good teacher. So what you should have done, Jason, is you saw the very first video because you compulsively check to see if people make any type of content about you. You were one of the first viewers of my fake milk to study. The second you would have, you, would have you, you saw this, you should have first off went into your own comments and banned my name so that people couldn't post it. And secondly, ignored me from the start. By revealing to me that you saw the videos, you revealed first off that you suck accounts and two, that you are incapable of controlling your emotions, which I already knew, but now it's obvious for some of the people who follow you. And those are the people I'm sort of targeting with this video so that I can show them what you truly are. So that's first and foremost what happened, which also means that these videos are going to keep coming every month. I'm not going to stop, of course, because he has absolutely no recourses. And uh, just as an explanation as to why this is a face cam video and I don't show the evidence, it's because it's the only way for him to take the videos down. A lot of people who sort of try and expose who blow his haven't realized it yet, but if you don't put any of his content in your video, he has no power over the video. He cannot do anything, especially if you refrain from saying his real name, because you could just be talking about anyone, right? Those are YouTube guidelines. Follow them and you'll be fine. And that way you don't just get deleted. The way he deletes it is, of course, he does it manually. He likes to pretend that he has a representative at YouTube who does it for him. That's, of course, completely false. He doesn't even have an artificial intelligence to do that for him. You cannot just click a button and then it sort of detects the videos that have your content and deletes them. That's reserved for very high standard YouTubers who have agencies and the agencies pay other agencies to do that for them. It's not something that the YouTube uh, robot can do for you. The YouTube robot can take the ad revenue from a video because it has your content. It cannot strike it or delete it, at least not yet. So again, he's a liar, but it's because he's trying to pretend that he's unconcerned, right? This is also the reason why he keeps saying that he doesn't watch YouTube Fitness, even though he's seen my videos. Because when people went into his comments to ask about my videos, he said that he would ban people to, who refer from them because my videos are full of lies. But how do you know they're full of lies if you haven't checked them, Jason? Again, he doesn't know how to lie. He's too stupid to even lie. So that's that. We're going to segue immediately into YouTube because a lot of people wonder how come his channel is still up when it has been publishing hate speech for at least four years. And what I, what I mean by hate speech, I really want people to, to get off their high horse and to not react emotionally to that term. Yes, it has been used and abused. Yes, criticizing someone is not hate speech. I get that. What I mean by hate speech is someone who is sitting in a chair saying that children should be massacred because the country they happen to reside in engaged in terrorism. That's hate speech. That's what Jason has been doing. And he's been doing that, you know, for the best part of four years now. The videos are still up on YouTube, not on his channel, because he's realized that those could get him striked. So he took them off. But even so, you would think that YouTube would want to associate their name with that guy. Okay, because he said those things, the videos are still up, you can still see him say those things. So how come P 
people get their channel destroyed for much less than that. So how come? There are many reasons. The first one, one that I've already sort of discussed in the previous installment of the fake milk series is, I do think that he has some sort of disability, or at least he has a proof from the government that is supposed to be disabled. And he showed that to YouTube as sort of a way to get away with murder because they're never going to target someone who is a quote unquote minority, meaning that he's supposed to be handicapped, which of course he refuses to admit to his followers. So that could be one, he could just be a protected minority under YouTube, uh, YouTube rules, or he's so small and inconsequential that YouTube doesn't really care. I know channels who basically upload hate speech like 24 seven, but they have 500 subs. So YouTube doesn't even take the time to delete them. They usually just wait for the person to be relevant and then they destroy them because they get too visible. But with him, his channel is dead, so they don't even bother. It's just a waste of time. With that YouTube stuff, you also have a, a funnel uh, insight into Jason's mind because he, one of the big part of his personality is pretending that he makes good money uh, across the board. People with low intelligence tend to do that, meaning that they recognize fame and status and wealth as things that are desirable, but they don't understand why. They just understand that it shines and therefore it's attractive. So they claim to be that, they claim to possess that. If you look at uh, uh, Genova, Genova is the same. If you listen to him, he is going to film the next Star Wars. He makes 100K CEO, 100K a year. He has none of these things, of course, but he understands that people will like to hear these things and it makes him look better. And Jason is sort of the same. He has this entire LARP around being middle class, which I will get into because what he considers to be middle class is hilarious. It's like he's basing his idea of class, of the, the, the way your class reflects your wealth off of sitcoms, which I do think is true because he tends to base his entire personality around fiction. But in, when it comes to YouTube, what he does is he claims he's making money off of YouTube. You have to understand one thing with YouTube. It used back in the day to pay. And I mean like 2014-15. The, the ad revenue was okay. And he indeed make a, made a good living back in the days with that. The issue is that that has dried up tremendously in the past few years. For multiple reasons. One, because there are so many content creators now that YouTube really doesn't have an, uh, an interest in paying people because they know that people will stay regardless. No matter how much YouTubers whine and cry about not making money off the ads, they stay because they don't have an option. There is no competition. Where are you going to go? On Dailymotion, on BitShot, no one watches that. So you're going to stay there. Even if your employer cuts your pay by 50%, you will stay there. You also have the issue of sponsorships that sort of replace the ad revenue. But if you're the type of person like Jason, who is just intolerable as a human being, and you don't get sponsorships, then what do you do? You have nothing. And the worst part is that that is reflected on Social Blade because we can actually see how much money people who monetize their channel make. And we know that Jason makes nothing. I think he makes around like 10, 10K a year, if that, like, like the top revenue of what he could be making. In reality, it's much lower than that because under COVID, the, the price cut has been even harsher. So he makes zero money off of YouTube. And you might wonder, well, why is he claiming he makes that money then? There's a reason. Just like with the fake milk, with, just like with his claims to be a PD expert, he, when he lies, there's always an idea behind that that is supposed to make him rich and famous. And that is so transparent that it fails every single time. And that's what I ended the last video on with the fake milk stuff. But I'm going to leave you with that. I'm not going to reveal it yet because... I want to keep it for him. So what I have afterwards is, and I just just to uh, to sum it up. But the reason why I say that, even without the conclusion, is because even if he used to make good money in the past, there is no way he's making good money now, and everyone knows that. And yet he still claims to be to be making money. And the worst part is that his excuse is he's saying that he has special treatment from YouTube, and he is paid more than anyone else view, which is not possible. I mean, some people have, they make more money because of their status. Usually it's because they have a better view retention, but he has none of these things. So what would YouTube 
pay a guy who can barely get 2% of your retention more than anyone else. It makes no sense. And also, if YouTube were to do that, they would also try and recommend his videos more because apparently he's a prodigy that needs to be paid more. So why do I never have his videos as recommended? That's very strange. His videos are dying for that reason. They don't get recommended. And each channel that doesn't get recommended dies. It's the law of YouTube. In terms of hypocrisy, one that I've always found particularly interesting with Bloho is he looks like total garbage, of course, but he's on PD. And he's been sometimes open about that. Sometimes he lies about that. Sometimes he claims to be natural for some reason, even though he claimed to be on heavy cycles in his 20s. So if we were to believe him and just believe in what he said and not the moments where he's just completely off the rails, he supposedly was on heavy cycles in his 20s. Then he got sick. Then he jumped on cycle again. And then he sort of floats around on TRT nowadays. So we're talking about a drug addicted person who has been on steroids for the better part of 20 years. And he still manages to look like that. And I want you to try and engage in an exercise of imagination. Try and picture what he would look, he would look like without the hormones, without the test. What would his body look like? Because it's already terrible. So imagine with zero tests and just pure estrogen production. I think one of two things would happen. One, he would transition into a woman. Two, he would transition into a pig. One of the two. And I think that the latter is much more possible and plausible than the former. But if it is the former, um, he would enjoy the fact that women tend to find partners that uh, are not really super exigent when it comes to standards. So, you know, blow, just put on a wig and just hope that someone picks you as a wife. After that, there's also the issue of the hypocrisy of pro pro uh, projection because he himself is on steroids, but he has no issue pointing out at other people on steroids. And sometimes people would say, oh, it's because they lie about it. Yeah, but he lies about it too. So what is the difference? If you go on his channel and you ask him right now, there's one chance out of two that he's going to say he's on nothing and he's natural. Because sometimes he claims natural for some reason. He's the, he's the reverse Genova. Genova claimed to be on the Skittles. I'm, I'm almost certain he never touched them. And Broho is do doing the exact opposite. But because he flip-flops all the time, it's impossible to really know what he's done. Uh, and the issue is that also some of the people he targeted in 2017 when his channel was basically 100% drama, some of them he targeted strictly because they were on drugs. For example, uh, I don't know his full name. I think it's Ed. It's No, it's Ward. It's something Ward uh, that Bloho calls Junkie Ward because he's incredibly imaginative when it comes to nicknames. We'll get to that later. He blamed the guy for being a junkie. And I think it's because the, that person that I've never really watched, I don't even really know who he is, was on hard drugs before and now he's on steroids, which is also a hard drug. So he's making fun of him for that. But that's what he does. He's addicted to TRT. Without it, he would just shrink away, disappear and potentially, you know, enter a depression so deep that we would never see him again. So how give? That's pure hypocrisy. If you're going to talk about people not being natural, you better be natural yourself or, or else it makes zero sense. And in terms of people he's attacked, I also want to point out the, the vile, disgusting nature of the, the mannerisms in which he engages when he attacks someone. Because when you criticize someone, I already, I already personally think that it's stupid, especially on YouTube. It's just drama fuel so that people click because they see a name. If you have something you have to criticize, you don't even need to cite the person. Just cite the practice that they engage in. Citing the person does nothing. Because if you cite the person and the people who watch the person click on the video, they are going to have two reactions. One, they're fanboys. So you, you, could, you could have the best video ever with the best evidences. They wouldn't believe it. Or they don't really watch the person. And therefore, they don't really care about the person. They just were there to understand that what the person did was not correct. So in reality, naming the person is just an ego trip and it's for views and clicks. But of course, that's all Bloho cares about. We'll see that 
Some people claim that if he was demonetized, he would stop making videos. I think it's not correct. He would still make them. I'll get to that. But he's attacked basically, basically anyone and everyone in YouTube fitness. And the way he attacks people is either he claims that they're on drugs and they're liars, which, hello, hypocrite, you're on drugs too. Or he claims they're gay. That's his big thing. If you're gay, he will attack you because you're gay. And if you claim that you're not gay, you're still gay because you're claiming to not be gay. This is even middle school level stuff would be an understatement because by middle school, I know that most of my friends and I grew out of that phase of saying, oh, that's gay. He's still in it. He's almost 50. How is that even possible? Oh. And the worst part is that a lot of people have pointed out that looks like projection. It looks like someone who's in the closet and refuses to realize that. And I personally, personally detest that argument of people who say, oh, homophobes or people who bash gays are gays themselves. That don't make sense. People who are arachnophobes don't secretly want to have sex with spiders. It's a stupid thing. And the worst part is I see gay dudes say that as an argument. Why are you devaluating your own sexual orientation by saying that someone else is that and therefore it makes them homophobic? It makes no sense. That's a rant, has nothing to do with that. But if you look at the nicknames that Bloho gives to people, he likes to give them nicknames that are, tend to be very sexual, like Strap on Destiny or Kino Booty. Does he realize that he's basically advertising for his own church? What is going on? But the reason why I say that is because attacking someone for their sexual orientation is pathetic and idiotic. Why would you even try and do that? It's not interesting. Find real reasons to attack people. But he doesn't stop there because, as I said, he made fun of someone who's apparently a recovering addict for their uh, past addictions. So that's already not cool. But then you get into the, the, the level of stuff where I'm really wondering if he is a sociopath or a psychopath. I know he isn't. I know he's just, he just doesn't understand what he says because he doesn't project himself, he has no empathy, but he made fun of Alex from Alpha Destiny because he grew up without a dad. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I do not know that. But it's just not something you bring up. Like, this is, those are fighting words. The issue is that Blow is a coward who hides himself behind a computer. So he's just an internet keyboard warrior. And the, the thing too is that his entire argument around that, if I remember correctly, was it was after the entire nether debacle. And he was saying that Alex had the tendency to follow strong you know, male figures because he didn't have a dad. Even if that's true, who brings that up? And when you consider what Bloho had to go through in his childhood, you would think, hey, you should be able to relate to people who didn't have a dad or had a crappy dad because based on what Bloho says, he was abused by his father throughout his childhood, most likely because he was very effeminate and sensitive, which is there's nothing wrong with that. And his dad was just, you know, an old school guy who didn't want his kid to grow up to be gay, most likely, even though that, you know, you, you can't stop your kid from being gay. The, the kid is gay, he's gay. And I think that that traumatized him. And that's the reason why he projects this image of a tough guy is because he's still trying to live up to what his father wanted him to be. And he refuses to accept the fact that that's not what he is. He's someone who's very meek, timid and sensitive. We know that from footage of himself interacting with other people. So why would he make fun of Alex for that? Why would he make fun of Alex for having, for lacking a father figure that impacted his life in such a manner? To me, it's, uh, just a show of the lack of empathy and the level that guy is willing to stoop down to for views. Because in reality, it wasn't even to win an argument. It was for views because people love that type of drama. They love that type of disgusting details about someone's life. And we don't even know if that's true. He might have made that up because he's a liar. Boom, boom. In terms of progress, project, blah, projection, because I spoke about the projection of his potential homosexuality before. And I want also to, uh, to say that uh, I, of course, have no issue with homosexuality. He attacks bodybuilders all the time, also based on the idea that it's a sport for gay men, which, yes, it, there's a lot of gay dudes following bodybuilding. Guess why? It's the appreciation and love of the male body. Put two and two, and two together. Who is going to go and actually enjoy that type of thing? Gay dudes. 
but the vast majority of people who engage in bodybuilding are straight men. Why? There is such a thing as male power fantasies. When you see someone who's ripped or strong, it's something that you can aspire to be. It's like a model. It's like watching a statue. You don't need to be gay to think, to feel something. You can feel, I personally feel appreciation for both male and female bodies, but there is a different value in both. And a lot of men think, feel the same way where it's, Technically, it's a form of motivation, in a sense. But of course, he doesn't see it that way. Why? Because he's a failed bodybuilder. He tried his hand at bodybuilding, and I am personally convinced that his true love is in bodybuilding. That's what he cares about, the aesthetics, looking big, looking ripped. Issue is, he can't get it. He tried, he tried, and he tried again, he cannot get it. But it's so obvious, because he keeps cycling back to it. He keeps LARPing about, I just care about strength. But every two months, he says, I need to cut, I need to cut. Why do you need to cut? You don't cut to be more competitive at your weight class, you don't compete. So why do you cut? Because you're a fat lard and you understand that you would be much happier with yourself if you weren't because you care about bodybuilding. And to me, that level of de delusion and that level of confusion is one, widespread and two, just toxic. Because he's taking his anger at not being aesthetic out on people and out on the sport he cannot obtain. So, in his head, bodybuilding is a toxic death cult. Even though that could be true for pro bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding is the exact opposite. It's life, it's youth, it's health, it's everything good. But he cannot see that because he's blinded by hate, literally blinded by hate. And that projection never stops because in reality, when he lies, it's always a projection. Uh, I remind you for people who follow him and who think that he's a good source of information. He said that straps, bands, chains and weighted stretch does not work. He retracted his claims about bands and chains very recently because he uses them to make to create the illusion of progression when it comes to lifts because his lifts have been stalling for like three years. He hasn't made any progress. So he resorts to fake plates, which I will prove he used fake plates, I have proofs, and he resorts to chains and bands because when he stores on a bench, he can just slap bands and say, well, that counts as a PR. No, it doesn't. When you go to a powerlifting competition, if you are supposed to bench 400, you can't put 330 on the bar and then bends and say, it's the same, bro. No, no, no one will let you do that. And he knows it, but because he's not a powerlifter, he's a fell bodybuilder, it doesn't really, you know, make any distinction in his head. And in terms of straps and weighted stretch, that's dogmatism because that guy is one of the most dogmatic pig I, I know of. I mean, a lot of YouTube fitness is dogmatic because they have to, it's their brand and they have to sell you something. So they have to be dogmatic about things that are their direct concurrent. But for him, what does he sell? He sells absolutely nothing. He has no clients. It's all ego. It's because if he doesn't like something, it doesn't work. And if in two years he likes it, it works. And, it, and the thing that he used to do that he loved, but now he doesn't love anymore, it doesn't work. The biggest issue with that is he gives advice. So the people who take advice from him actually follow that. And yes, the people who still follow him, either follow him because he, want, he wants them to go crazy or because they're not super smart themselves. And uh, it's something I also want to say here. I know Jason watches this video, so I'm going to talk to you directly. You realize that one, if you started making drama videos again, you would make 10 times the views. Two, the people who found my videos, who are now spamming my name under your comments, they want you to crack. They are, they just are tired of your boring, informative videos. They don't watch them. It's the reason why you have no viewer retention on these ones. No one cares. But when you make a video about another person in YouTube fitness, you get 10 times the views. I have had people come to my comment and say that they cannot wait for you to snap because they know these videos make you upset and they know that at some point you're going to go crazy. And when that happens, you're going to start providing ments again and you're going to become their own personal lol cow again. Do you want to make content for these people? You're their clown. You're not a YouTuber. You are not a coach. You're not a powerlifter. You are a clown, a full-fledged clown. And right now you're a clown that has been in retirement for the past year but you're going to come out of retirement eventually. You're going to be forced to. Why? You don't control your emotions. And everyone knows that. It's because it's, it's the reason why people troll you, by the way. They know you cannot control your emotions. So they'll keep doing that until you snap.
and you will eventually snap. So after that, in terms of pro projection, I think that's pretty much all I had to say. I also wanted to talk about the science YouTube. For the people who've been on YouTube Fitness for a while, you realize that there's that new trend of science. The best program, uh, the, the best program based on science, the best way to train your biceps based on science, blah, 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 blah. Of course, this has nothing to do with science. It's marketing because people realize that novices, noobs, they want something that works. Okay. And because most people have been burned before by fake nannies and just stupid idiots on YouTube fitness, they are quite skeptical. But the one aspect in life in general where people are not skeptical at all is science. You can tell them something completely outlandish. And if you end the sentence with proven by science, they'll buy it. It's the new stamp that you put on your product so that people actually purchase it and everyone does it because it works. And he's tried too. The issue is that he is not even competent enough to pull that off. It's a pretty easy thing to pull off. You go on Google, you type what you want to sell. So let's say you want to sell a full body program. You type full body program, most effective slash optimal by science. And you click on the first study that proves that you're right you read the excerpt and then you make a video about it and you put the link to the program in the description. That's how you do it. That's how you sell programs on YouTube. He can't even do that. He can't even put the link in the description. He claims it's because he will get striked. That's not how it works. It's just not how it works. And he is even incapable of understanding the studies he talks about, which is why I said that he's basically a glorified, uh, what is the name of that thing again? Jeev, it was before Google. The, I don't know if the old guys on the channel remember that. The guy with the dark suit, hi Jeev, ask Jeev, ask Jeev. Well, this one is ask Kof, but the issue is that Kof doesn't know anything, so he'll just bring whatever information, even if it makes zero sense. So that's the issue. It's he's tr he always tries to do that. He tries to follow trends created by people who are more intelligent and savvy than him, but he can't. He can't do it. So he's tried that science thing. He just, he fails at it. And it's, the issue too is that even though you're, when you do that, you're supposed to uh, use studies that prove your case, that are convenient for your, the utilization that you want to make of them, since he changes his, his mind all the time, he's not able to utilize that properly. And it's immediately obvious with him that he's an hypocrite because if you question him about the studies he cites, he either doesn't cite them at all or he changes the subject. And it's also the reason why he cannot retain an audience. If you look at his audience, you will see that there's a lot of people who come and go all the time. And that on a channel like mine is already, it's not normal, but it's, it's expected. And yet I have a better viewer retention than him. And we make around the same amount of views. He has more than 10 times the subs. How is that possible? because most of his subs are about, they're not real people. And he, he has around 3000 subs in, in people who watch him 3000 subs. He had like a reserve of 20 K subs who would watch him if he actually snapped and made funny videos again. Uh, I don't know how deep we are in, so I'm just going to check. Oh boy, only 28 minutes in. <laughs> You are in luck. So we're going to continue. Hey, so next point I have to say is his form and his form advice. I try to deconstruct the arguments of people who I know watch him seriously, not people who watch him because he's a lot of people who really think that he gives good advice. I've pretty much proved to you that he, he is not to be trusted because he's completely unstable. He's not a good person either. So the one thing left would be maybe he's a powerlifting phenom, right? Maybe the information he gives is stupid, but he himself is pretty strong. He's pretty gifted. A lot of people watch some people who are just strong. They might be terrible individuals. They might be idiotic, but they're strong. So it's fun to watch them and that's fine. But he's not even that. And the technique advice that he gives is awful. For someone who's been lifting for 20 years, that's not normal. And it's the reason why he gets injured all the time because his form is terrible and he refuses to actually, you know, address it because it would mean reflecting upon yourself, realizing that you need to put the ego on the side and work on form. He just won't do it. He won't work on his weak points. 
and that is expressed throughout many of his lifts, like the squats, for example. If you look at him squat, if you ever wondered, why does he always squat with a box? It's because it corrects his issue. When he squats, and with a lot of people, it's the same issue. When they're at the bottom of the squat and they reverse the squat, their hips immediately shoot up. Why? They have a weak core, they have a weak thoracic extension, they have weak glutes. So the, the back immediately compensates and they good morning the weight up. That's what he does. It's the reason why he refuses to squat to depth. He hasn't squatted in depth to depth in years, years. None of the squats you see on his channel pass in a powerlifting meet for multiple reasons. You're not allowed to squat with a bar that is not a straight bar. So the curved bar that he uses because he has terrible shoulder mobility are not allowed. You're not allowed to squat with bands and, and chains, of course. You're not allowed to not go to parallel, which he never goes to parallel. He never goes below parallel. You're not allowed to squat with a box. But can you picture him, Jason, wobbling his loud ass to a powerlifting meet with a box and saying, I'm going to use the box to squat on. You're not supposed to bring a box. Don't squat on the box. I will make a video on box squat because people, I don't know why people are so attached to them. They're not that great for hypertrophy even to transfer to the normal squat. They're not that great. And it's why he keeps squatting like this. He keeps variations. He doesn't go to depth. He can't go to depth. If he goes to depth, he gets folded like a pancake, like an albino pancake, and he fills the lift and he gets injured. So don't take advice from him on the squat. He makes videos about squat tutorials. Disregard these for your own health and benefit. Deadlift, same reason. He doesn't know how to pull with a neutral spine. He keeps filming the deadlift from the, the front so that you can see it. His back is like this. You look at old videos of him deadlifting. He always deadlifts with a rounded back. And again, people will say, oh, it's fine to deadlift with rounded back. Yeah, if you're elite, if you're pulling anything actually interesting for your body weight, it's not his case. The only thing he's doing is he's damaging his spine over time. And again, a deadlift that doesn't happen on either a gym with other people to vouch that the plates are real or a powerlifting platform doesn't count. So the best deadlift we've seen of him in the past few years was like 500 pounds for reps, something like this. For 20 years of training, that's low. I also want to talk about one thing. The overhead press tutorial. You see, when YouTube Fitness started, you could make not necessarily money, even though the views gave you money, but you could get a lot of attention off of just making easy squats, deadlift, and overhead press bench tutorials. Why? Because almost none of these videos were out there. So people were immediately attracted to your video because it was the only one available. Keep in mind, Bloho has been on YouTube forever. He's pretty much one of the very first YouTube fitness channels. And he made a video, an overhead press tutorial, that is still quite popular. It has hundreds of thousands of views. Look at that video. Go back. I think it's the video with the fly. There's a fly on his head and he can't even feel it. Go back to that video. Watch his form. His wrists are like this. All the way cocked back with the bar here. You know what that is? That is a recipe for disaster. That's wrist tendinitis 101. People who bench like this with a full grip or who overpress like this, the wrist is supposed to be stuck. You're supposed to stack the joints. This is the strongest position. And yet, he still has that tutorial up and he has it up. Why? Because he made money off of it, because he's attached to the number of views, because he has an... For someone who is so incompetent at life, his ego is insanely big. He won't take the video down because he associates the fact that the video did very well to his own life and he thinks it's a success. Anyone who is actually a coach, who is interested and invested in the well-being of people who would have taken the video down because it's bad advice. You're not supposed to repress like this. And the funniest part about that is that video is one of the reasons why so many people hate him because I've actually personally talked to a lot of people on YouTube who told me that they got injured, they got, they got wrist injuries from following his advice, and it's the, the second they started realizing that he didn't know what he was talking about, and they started coming after him. So he basically creates his own demise. And across the board, I also want you to keep in mind that those videos exist because of him. I'm not blaming him because I'm the one recording and pu putting them online, but it's not like he doesn't deserve them. It's not like I'm just focusing on a random guy. The two people I focus on, Bloho and Nether, deserve it a thousand times over. It's the reason why I keep going. It's because they hurt people. 
and I will never stop until they stop hurting people. If they stopped, I would stop as well. But that's my big issue with this entire thing. He gives bad advice, and he's been giving bad advice forever. And the worst part is that he cannot get anything right. It's insane, but I cannot think of a single lift he does with good form. Even the curl. He started doing curls again recently because he wants to grow his biceps, which never going to happen because they used to be full of synthol, so they're damaged way past the point of redemption. And the way he does curls just makes it worse. He overextends his arm. When he curls up, he lifts the shoulder. You would think that someone who's been training for so long knows how to do a curl. It's one of the least technical lifts out there. But, of course, because he has an ego and he doesn't want people to realize that he can barely curl 20 pounds, he has to do that because he's turning the curl into a compound movement. He's involving more joints so that he can lift more weight. That does nothing for your biceps. It's the equivalent of a cheap curl in reality. It involves much more than the bicep, which reduces the implication that the bicep gets stimulated. And he, I think, knows that somewhere in his empty coconut head, he knows that, but he will never actually admit that. Same for triceps. You see him, he, he is deeply aware that his arms look like uh, spaghettis. He, of course, still claims to have 18 inches arms. And he used to claim he had 20 inches arms, which he barely has 14 inches arms. And if you don't believe me, go on his channel and tell him to actually tape his arms and tape them tight on camera, he won't do it. So the truth with him too is that, because as I said, he's completely obsessed with bodybuilding, that's all he cares about, he is actively trying to look better. But because he also copes as a strength athlete, he cannot let his strength go. And because he is impossibly lazy, he cannot create in his mind a program that would help him get stronger, get bigger, and also not do a lot of work because that would entail actually doing a lot of work. So what does he do? He usually picks a weight he has no business moving. He uses terrible form and then he does it. Look at the way he does lateral raises. That's how you get a shoulder impingement. He already has an impingement. He just makes it worse. Tricep extension, same thing. He does the tricep extension, uh, the score crusher, the way uh, Mark Ripoto tells people to do it. Where you move the shoulder joint, you move the elbow joint and the wrist joint at the same time. That's a compound movement. That's like a pullover. It stops being a skull crusher. If you like doing it, fine, but understand that you're not recruiting the tricep as much as you think. But a lot of people who are going to watch Blow, who are going to do it because they know nothing, and they think he knows, but he doesn't. I, I spoke about laziness. A trait about him that I personally find despicable and probably one of the ones that I hate the most, or at least despise the most, is his tendency to talk about being a man and being a badass and being tough, resilient, his whole shtick about fortitude, when he himself is the laziest sack of pus I've ever seen in my life. A guy who collects warfare, a guy who hasn't worked a day in his life, who leeched off of his wife's, who leeches off of the taxpayer, has no business telling anyone to be strong and tough. No business. The guy is the biggest baby you've ever seen. I remember reading something uh, when, he, <laughs> when he tore his bicep because of his sinful use that he tried to claim was because he got infected by shaving the bicep. I remember that to change the bandage, he had to take painkillers. He was such a baby that he couldn't even change a bandage without being drugged up completely. And you see that with his training too. He doesn't do high reps on stuff that is actually challenging. You will never see him doing 12, like 8 to 12 on a squat, he will never do. Why? It's too taxing, it's too tough, he doesn't like that. And yet, he pretends he does. And that's the entire dichotomy of what I expressed before. I truly think that he was deeply traumatized as a kid, and he still tries to be that man. He still tries to be that badass Texan that he thinks his father wants him to be, but he won't be able to do it. You cannot lie to yourself. You cannot reinvent yourself to that point. There is something in you that is the real you. And if you try to go at the exact opposite, it's just so evident. It's immediately evident. And a big a proof of that, that he's incredibly lazy and he's not dedicated to the iron at all, is he stopped training for like a full year. And there are two different stories about that. And there's actually the one where he claims he was bedridden because of Meniere's disease, which is incorrect because if he had Meniere's, he wouldn't be able to lift heavy. 
And the Meniere disease, I've already explained, it was just a way to, uh, in my opinion, game the system and get warfare. But he, even then at that point, was apparently bedridden, which means he played uh, World of Warcraft 24 hours a day. He claims at that time that he was actually making money writing papers for college students, which who would pay that guy to write a paper? He can barely write English. He, even a middle schooler, if they took a, a homework written by Bro to their teacher, the teacher would say, this is you, I'm not grading that, do it again. And the second part is, it was, I think, again, in 2017, he, it was the infamous wealth, wheelchair uh, blowhole phase where he was getting so fat at such a fast rate and we would never see him get up that people thought he'd broken his spine and that he was paralyzed in a wheelchair. And of course, he tried to claim that it wasn't the case by uploading old footage. But in reality, we have a pretty solid case of a guy who spent a year not training at all. It was when he had his weird minimalistic phase when he claimed that you could grow your chest with chin up and overhead press, which look at his chest. Do you want to follow his advice? Look at, he has tits. If you want tits, then well, sure, do it. But the entire crux of the argument here is that guy has no business telling anyone how to be a man because he's not a man himself. And again, he's so, he's trying so hard. You can tell that he understood he, he couldn't be a man in action, so he's going to be a man in words. And across the board, that's common, I would say, with modern men. It's a way to cope because if he can manage to convince people that he's actually that big, bad man, then he would feel better about himself. Trust me, Jason, it's not going to make you feel any better. You should have been seeing a therapist a long time ago. I don't think it's too late for you. I do think, however, that your narcissism is going to prevent you from seeking the help you desperately need. He also stopped squatting. That was the, the funny part about that too. And when he stops doing something, he can never just say it. Like he, he, he couldn't just say, I don't squat because I'm a lazy bum. He had to come up with an excuse. And the excuse was, I cannot do squats because I have a congenital heart condition and if I squat, my heart will explode. And he even claimed that some of, of his family members died of it, which again, he tends to rope his family in. Leave your family alone. They cut the ties for a reason. They don't want anything to do with you. Of course, that was a lie. The only reason he did that is because he got called out by Jeff Side, if I remember correctly, who challenged him to a 20 rep ch squat challenge. And because 20 reps of squat for Bloho is unfathomable because it's actually difficult he just found an excuse across the board with that guy you always see the same pattern if there's something that happens it's never his fault it's always someone else's fault he never takes responsibility does that sound like a man does that sound like a good role model for young men long young men i don't think so and the worst part is that it is in direct opposition with what he's supposed to be right because he's supposed to be a guy who is a coach and who does nothing but training. He's even proud of it. He doesn't have a day job. He will admit he doesn't have a day job. He lies about the income he makes, but his entire LARP is centered around the fact that all he does is train. And yet he cannot grow his strength. He cannot improve his physique. He cannot give good advice. He cannot even stick to a training regimen before becoming lazy. So what does he have? Nothing. In reality, nothing. He has nothing. And he sort of survives because he made it to YouTube first. But for him to be able to actually rebirth and be reborn and have a life that actually makes sense, not a life of anguish, not a life of waking up to delete comments and make sure that the trolls aren't trying to ruin your business that doesn't even exist. And then squatting fake plates and deleting fake plates for an audience that doesn't even exist. He could actually get a job as like a, you know, a bagger in a grocery store. He would complement his income that he gets from welfare. He would go to a therapist because it's free. He's supposed to be on disability, so it's free for him. He would actually start to rebuild his life, but he can't. He's shackled by his YouTube channel. And it might sound strange, and some people might think I'm being hypocritical here, but I personally do believe that the best thing that could happen to him is for his YouTube channel to be deleted so that he could actually get his life back. And I'm not saying that I'm doing those videos to make his channel be deleted because it doesn't work like that. But if I can be the tipping point of him realizing that he's been living a lie, so be it. I don't think it's ever going to happen because now it's 
The narcissism has completely devoured his soul and what he used to be, which wasn't much in the first place. But that's, that's the explanation behind that. Let's talk about uh, life. Let's talk about real life because he exists solely uh, in his apartment. He doesn't really go out anymore. As crazy as it sounds, I will get to the stalkers afterwards, the people who are basically focused on exposing Bloho who he is. These people are quite dedicated. I will give them that. You can, if you look on the internet, you can find some info that is uh, sometimes a little bit scary because you would really need to be completely obsessed with the guy to find it. That being said, I'm making those videos, so who am I to talk, right? But I have found a guy who actually documented a log where he sat outside of Bloho's house and he noted when the guy would come out. And apparently during a certain period of time, he would go out to go to Costco and he would come, so basically grocery shopping once a week or once every four days. And he now has, a, has reached a stage of complete recluse where he actually holds his groceries. He doesn't even come out. He doesn't go outside, which also explains the reason why he's so pale. You would think that someone who lives in Texas would actually have a tan or they would have that thing that white people have when they go out in the sun because they don't have any, you know, melanin in their skin. So they just become red like a lobster. But he is basically Casper the Ghost, uh, 2365 uh, days a year because he never goes out. And the reason why he never goes out is because we've seen the result when he does. Because there was a show, once upon a time, called Tommy's Garage. And Tommy's Garage was, if I remember correctly, a right-wing uh, show about politics that Bloho attended with his girlfriend at the time, Moon Cookie, that we will also be discussing in later installments. And the entire thing was, he was basically sitting there and they were listening to some guy say some things about immigration and they would laugh and clap and be happy about that. There is direct footage of him at those things. There is pictures. I have never seen someone more uncomfortable in my life. He is the definition of cringe. I don't like the term cringe. He is cringe. You, the human cringe. And so that entails clearly looking really distressed when people were around him, trying to shrink himself as much as he could, trying to, you know, stay away, not engage with people much. When you see the 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 footage of him too, always checking to see if people look at him, always making sure that his expression reflects theirs because he doesn't want to stand out. He doesn't want to be an outcast because that's what he is. He's an outcast in real life. All of which is quite sad, to be honest, because to me, it's the sign of someone who never managed to grow beyond their childhood trauma of being a, a complete reject in high school. And that entire thing ended up in a fiasco because eventually they found out about the stolen batter and they kicked him out but not before he stole from them. There is a, a clip of him. There was a, I think they had a fridge at Tommy's garage and the food from the fridge would keep disappearing. It would go missing. And at some point they got tired of it. So they put a spy camera at the bottom to see the legs and the feet of the people who would stop in front of the fridge. And there is a footage that it's too good to be true. It looks fake. I'm sure it's not fake. Uh, Bloho has the tendency to wear very high uh, sole boots because he's small, he's 5'7", to look taller. And he had military boots, of course, because he laps as a, uh, as a military man. And you see the footage and you see legs that go by. And the last pair of legs that go by is his with his boots. And it goes by and you can tell he goes by. He, he passes the fridge and you can tell he stops to make sure that everyone is leaving the premise. And then you see the, the boots come back, stop in front of the fridge, open the fridge, grab something and then run. And you see that like two times. He does that two times. So he was the one stealing pizza from the fridge and he got kicked out also, also because of this. Which also paints a grim picture of the relationships that this guy has in his life. Because from what we know, he has absolutely no one. He used to have a dog, but the dog now is gone. Hopefully he's still alive. He used to have a girlfriend. He doesn't have a girlfriend anymore. His family is completely, est completely estranged from him. He doesn't have friends. So the only thing he has is his YouTube channel. And the only interaction you get on YouTube is comments with subscribers, all of which hate him, the vast majority of which troll him all the time. So his entire connection with real life and real people is this. It's the reason why I say he needs to leave. He needs to leave YouTube. This is not healthy. I truly do think that eventually he's going to make an attempt at his life 
because no one can resist that. Or if he can, he must be trapped in a level of hell that is much more damaging than any amount of excuse or forgiveness would ever give him. Because the worst part is that he could end it. He doesn't even have to delete his channel. Some people want him to, but he would just have to apologize for all of the bad he's done or the lies he spread. A lot of people would just like leave him be and stop being on his case if he did that. And he can't. He can't take that one step that would actually free him, allow him to have a life with real people. So I'm going to stop here for this video. I did have something at the back of my mind that I wanted to say, but I think I've already said it. Um, the reason why I don't use footage is, again, because if I do, I'm going to get a strike from him. Even though I'm actually trying to help him with these videos, a lot of people consume those videos because they hate him. And because it's fun, and of course, the, watching a train wreck is always fun, but there is a deeper meaning behind that. And I do think that a lot of people who despise him, they despise him because they see some of them in him, or deep down they realize that it needs to be stopped. And uh, they will, of course, never verbalize it, but I, I'm not afraid of verbalizing it. I truly do think that it would be the best option for you, for him in his life. So that's going to be that. I could keep talking about certain some of these sentences forever, in reality. Uh, let, let's let's just let's just finish here because I see that the sentence is not over. Uh, no, let's 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 keep that on the side. This is too much. This is a big piece. This is a big fish for people who know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to leave that aside. I think the video is long enough. Thank you for watching. Again, I know that uh, this type of video has become popular on a certain website. You guys keep doing you. Let me know in the comments if I can do something for you. And we'll stay in contact that way. Have a good day.